get started, um, and the first class is how to get what you really want. Um, I guess to get started, how many of you write goals? How many of you have a goal set? I'm, just, I'm sure a lot of you do. How many of them actually <laughs> write them down? Good. Wonderful. Because actually, you are ten times more likely to get your goal if you write it down. And that will increase exponentially if you actually write them on a daily basis. So writing them down is the first step. Yeah, everybody grab a notebook. Writing them down is actually the first step to get your goals, but generally you should look at your goals daily as well as rewrite them daily. Because subconsciously, this is how you guide yourself to get what you really want. Keep focused and make sure you stay on track. Okay? Let's talk about what do you want. When you ask most people, they're going to tell you, well, you know what? I just want to be happy, right? And they say, oh, you know what? I want to make a lot of money. Because that's a big standard of success, right? Then they're going to say, you know what? If they don't tell you, they're thinking it. I want to be pretty. I want to be like Kim Kardashian and her lifestyle, right? You guys are smiling at me because people don't say it out loud, but she is one of the biggest figures in our society today, okay? But to start, I really want to focus on money. How much money is enough? Okay. If you see someone with a very large house that you think is, has made it, you deem them successful, right? So they should be happy. Okay. So what is that successful number? Is it having a big yacht? Is it having a big house? Is it having a really expensive car? What is the number? So how do you define success? I'm sorry? Impacting others' lives. Absolutely, impacting people. But generally, do you think if you make a lot of money, you're successful? Because that is what a lot of people put on their goal cards, and they put very big numbers. And it's not a bad thing, because I've got a big number on mine, too. But I want you to know why you have the big number. Okay? So, we're going to do an experiment. Close your eyes. I want you to picture that you now, each of you, have a million dollars in cash that is now yours. It is sitting in front of you in these beautiful little stacks of paper that's wrapped in this really nice brand new piece of paper. Okay, it says $10,000 on each wrapper. I want you to touch it. I want you to feel it. Okay, the paper is very crisp. You can hear it as you flip through the paper. I want you to feel what it's like that you now have a million dollars in cash. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of smiles around the room. <laughs> It's okay. But now, I'm going to tell you there's only one caveat to the money. You can't spend it. Open your eyes. Are you happy now? I'm seeing a lot of confused faces. Depends. What does it depend on? How did we acquire that money if it wasn't? I just gave it to you. My gift to you. I won the lottery. I'm giving you a million dollars in cash. But you can't spend it. Does the money still make you happy? There's a lot of things you can do with a million dollars in cash in these beautiful little stacks. You can put them in bigger stacks and maybe get a piece of glass and put it on to make a great table, right? You can use the money's wallpaper, gift wrap, shred it, and use it for your hamster. I mean, that's illegal because you can't really deface money, but there's a lot of things you can do with a million dollars in cash if you can't spend it. Does that make you happy? Could you give it to like an army? Nope. Can't do anything. You have to keep it, giving you a million dollars in cash. Okay, you're all looking at me like, go ahead. Because if we didn't have dollars then there's nothing that we can do with this, like, it's there. Right, it's just paper. So, the thought is, people say, I want money. No, you don't. Right? You want the things that money can buy. Exactly, you want the power that comes with, people associate with power. That I think that it's power. Okay. But it's not, it's just money. But is it the power that you want? Let's go a little further. Okay? A lot of people say, if I get this money, I'm going to buy this really great sports car. Convertible Benz. Right? Does everybody want a convertible Benz? It's yours. I'm just giving you the keys. I'm going to have the dealership drive it to your house, put it in the driveway. Okay? One trick. Can't drive it. Can't go anywhere with it. But you can go out and you can sit in it, turn the radio on, <laughs> take a nap, use it for storage. Power goes out, you can use it to charge your phone. <laughs> Do you still want the car? No. The things that money will buy will give you connections and make you feel connected to other people, right? You want the experience that money is going to buy you. You want to be able to share these gifts with other people and in return get connected to them. You want to give the money away because that makes you feel good to help others, right? 
You want to drive the new car because you want to drive it with your best friend or family member. Because that gives you that connection. So if that is the definition of being rich, because that's the, all that money does, because we've established that money is just paper. So if you buy things with it to get connected, to feel important with other people, can't we do that now without money? Yeah, right? You can go take a walk on the beach with your best friend and get a deep connection that you don't have to spend a dime for. Right? You can take a trip down to the mall and have fun with your friend all day long or a family member and get that same closeness if you had spent the day on a yacht. Because the feeling is the same. That's what you're looking for. So ultimately, when you write your goals down, think about what exactly you want. Because you mentioned, um, Jennifer, that you want power. Okay? You don't want power. You want what power feels like. So you're looking for a feeling. So your goals are basically filling a need, an emotional need. Okay? I'm not saying money is a bad thing, but I want you to understand why you want it. Because nobody wants a million dollars in cash. We've already established that, right? All right. So let's define actually what success is. Okay? Yes, you have to have a certain amount of money. You have to pay your bills. You have to take care of your family. Yes, you want to go on vacation. And yes, it's fun to shop. I'll be the first one to say, I love to shop. Okay? But what, how much money is enough? And it's, it's different for everybody, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I just want you to understand that being successful is a whole lot more than just money. Okay? It's also about quality relationships we just talked about. It's the experiences that you have with your friends, with your family, community service, how you make a difference. Those are the feelings that you're looking for. Okay? Also being successful is about being healthy, about having Fill your body with energy, getting up every morning, just getting, feeling that you can do anything. And if, you, if you're not healthy, nothing matters. I don't care what your goals are because you just don't feel like it. So having a healthy body is one of the most important things to be about being successful. Because remember, 70% of all disease is lifestyle. So when you get to 80 and 90 years old and you look back at your life, you can literally think about 70% of the things that you're going to experience medically you could have avoided. Okay, and you don't need money for this. It's a choice. Right? Next part of happiness is freedom of your time. This is one that people, when you talk about time, they really don't put a lot of emphasis on it. But this is where true wealth comes in. We all have 24 hours in a day. Einstein had the same 24 hours that you had. Look what he did with his time. There are people that will make a half a million dollars to a million dollars a year, but work 100 hours a week. Are they truly wealthy? No. In their eyes, they think, I have the big car and the big house, but feeling inside, I don't have time to spend with my friends and my family. I don't have time to go on vacations. Right? I don't spend time with my kids. I don't have time to spend time for me. Right? So are you truly wealthy? You have to have freedom of your time. Another important factor of success is your self-worth. How you feel about yourself. Bless you. Okay? What is your self-respect? How do you take care of yourself? Okay? And also, what is your passion? Have you found your passion in life? It's really sad when you talk to people my age or older than me, so you know, what's your passion? You go, I don't know. I work a lot. I like my family. Okay? There is something that you're here for. And there's something that you get up every day saying, you know what, if I could design my day, this is what I would do all day long because I just love it. I can't sleep at night because I know tomorrow I get to do that. That's what that passion is. That's the one that, thing that keeps you up at night that you want to share with everybody on the planet. And for me, as those ladies know in the back, it was smart. This is the one thing that I have been dreaming about for 20 years. And it's that thing that will never go away. And I wish for all of you that you find what your passion is sooner than later so you can get doing it because it is the most amazing feeling in the world. But having said that, if you look at 80% of the equation for what we now define as successful, money can't buy any of it. Interesting, right? So we first started talking about, oh, look at the big house and the million dollars in cash. We define that as success. But now if you look at the equation, 80% of success has nothing to do with money. So can we all be truly successful now? And stop dreaming about, oh, when I get the car, or when I get that big job, or when I get the next raise, then I'll be happy. But a lot of those people that, when I get there and they say those things, when they do get the car or they do get the house, well, it's nice for a little while, but then they start looking for the next thing to buy. Because they understand, well, why am I not fulfilled? I got to what I thought I wanted. Because really, 
what they wanted is what those things could buy, was the relationships. So I'm hoping that having started this conversation today with you, that you realize at this point what you're really looking for. Okay, having a great salary is wonderful. The things you want to share them with people. Okay, so what I want you to think about when we start setting our goals today is ask yourself this question. At the end of the year, I want you to look back and say, you know what? What one, two, or maybe three things at the most could have happened in 2013 that would have made this year outstanding? What is that one thing, two things, that you've been thinking about? You know, if this would happen, that would have made this year great. Okay, and you look back and say, well, 2013 was amazing because I accomplished this. Now remember, when I want you to ask this question, these are things that you control. Remember, your life is up to you. There is no magic fairy that's going to come around and say, you know, what's your goal? Here it is. It's done. It doesn't happen that way. Okay, you are the one that decides your life. You are the one that makes your life exactly what it is. If you don't like what your life is, change it. It's up to you. So these are the things that you have to work toward. But I want you to think of what is that one thing that's going to be like, you know what? That would be so amazing if I got that done this year. Okay, that's what we're going to set. All right. So usually when you ask people to set goals, there are always three main categories. They're going to ask you, obviously, financial, because you do have to fulfill that basic need. Okay? There are your health goals and your relationship goals. These are the top three categories that usually everybody sorts their goals into. Are there other categories? Absolutely. Some could be your business, professional goals, your spiritual goals, community service goals. Okay? You can list the top 20 goals that you have, but these are the top three that generally everybody sets. So we're going to get started today. But there are some guidelines that I want you to think about. And of course, they're smart guidelines. Okay. S. S stands for make your goals very simple and very clear. I want you to focus on what you want and get extremely clear. And let me be, give you an example. How many of you want a new car? Nobody wants a new car. I want a new car. Jasmine <laughs> wants a new car. Okay. So if you wrote on your goal sheet, I want a new car, is that clear? No. Because I could give you a five-year-old used car, but it's new to you, right? I want you to be very specific. I want a new car that just rolled off the assembly line. I want black exterior with camel interior. I want to have a great sound system. I want it to be a two-door. I want to have a convertible. I want to have the in-sync system. Get as detailed as you can, because that's how things materialize. I want you to go to the dealership, sit in the car, feel what it feels like, smell the smell. Get the brochure. And this, remember, this is an analogy. It's just not for cars. It's whatever you want. Okay? If you want a job, if you want to run Target stores one day, what should you do? You need to go to Target. You need to find someone in the Target store to maybe interview or get a mentor. You need to find someone like a Joy and say, Could you, can I have five minutes of your time to help me? Tell me what your day is like. How do I get in your shoes? You have a better idea. Okay? So get clear on what you want. Oh, well, sorry. Next one, measurable. Make sure you can measure your goals. For example, in 20 days from now, this is where I want to be to get my goal done. Okay, so you have to have some kind of measurement system. If I get this much done, or if I talk to this many people, I'm on my way to fulfill the goal. Does that make sense? Okay, next one. You have to write down some action steps. Give yourself a plan to get it done. Okay, so for example, when I was starting SMART, I knew what I wanted the end goal to be. I know I had to fill in all the gaps in between, and then I put time, dates, on each one. So obviously, timely is one of them. You need a date on your goals, because if you don't have a date, well, someday I'd like to have this done. Someday doesn't come. Give yourself a date. There's something really, really important subconsciously about giving yourself dates. R is for rewards. Please don't take these lightly. Okay? You need to reward yourself for your efforts. Okay? If you take baby steps every day, in your action steps, you're going to write, what can I do daily to make sure I get this goal done, because it's that important to me. Okay? Maybe and when you do your measurement, 25% complete, you're going to give yourself a reward. A reward could be anything. A reward could be spending the day at the beach with your partner or your best friend, or just going to the park and enjoying the day, going to the zoo, go buy a new dress. But make sure you give yourself a reward that's going to get you excited about where you're going. Okay? 
Next T obviously is timely. We already talked about. Make sure you put a date on it. Then the next T is you need to tell someone. You need to have a team. Okay? You need to find someone that you can trust, that you will say, you know what, this is my goal, and I'm trusting you with that goal. But I need your help. Because I'm the first one that's going to let me off. Oh, you don't do it today, do it tomorrow. Does anybody have that syndrome? I do it all the time. So I'll worry about tomorrow. Okay? But if I know that you're going to call me in 10 days and say, Valerie, did you get it done? Where are you? This is where you should be. I'm going to be really embarrassed when you call me that you're wasting your time because I'm going to call and tell you I didn't get it done. Okay? You need to have a partner that's going to keep you on track and keep you accountable. Okay? And one of the most important things that you can do to get your goals done is you've got to get excited about your goal. Remember we talked about passion? If you're not excited about your goal and if it's not that one thing that's going to get you over in the morning so you can do that little baby step that day, your goal isn't big enough. Set a new goal. Because if you're not excited about your goal, I'm telling you now, you will not get it done. No matter how many times she calls me every other day, did you get it done? Did you get it done? I'm like, uh -huh. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, pick a new goal. And she's going to tell me, I'm going to stop calling you until you pick a new goal. Maybe you need to get forward. You've got to get excited. You've got to get some passion about it. Okay? So, what we're going to do, remember your top three goals are your financial goals, your health goals, and your relationship goals. So, everybody should have goal sheets in front of them. It's a handout. And we're going to do the top one right now. We're going to do the health goals. Now, what I want you to think is I want you to pick your top three health goals for this year. Okay? Examples of health goals. Yes, I want to lose five pounds. Those are nice, but I don't want you to think of health goals as aesthetics. I want you to think them of your overall health. If I eat better, I will, I'm going to have more energy. Okay? Looking better is nice. But that's not going to get you motivated. That's not going to get you to do it every day. I know that if I stop eating as much sugar, I know that I can prevent diabetes someday. I know that if I exercise and if my goal is to run a mile in 10 minutes, which for me would be like amazing, um, if I can do that in the next month, I know that my overall health will be better. I know that I can have more energy every day. Okay, so health goals are just not about losing weight. Yes, you can put that in if you want to. But it could be, I want to make sure I incorporate a vegetable in each of my dinners every day. Okay? Those are health goals. So write your top three health goals that you would like to accomplish this year. Ladies in the back, are you writing? Yes, ma'am. question. Yeah. Friends, what do we write there? I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, yeah. When everybody's done with your top three, just go ahead and move. Some of you writing away and having no problem picking three, and some of you are stuck after the first one. There are a lot of things, remember, you can do for your health. It's just not about losing weight. I want to cut down maybe on the white flour, cut down on sugar, cut down on salt. Make sure I have a fruit every morning, add a vegetable. I want to run a marathon. I want to make sure I walk 20 minutes three times a week. I want to make sure I can get through a step class at the gym and not be huffing and puffing at the end of the class. I want to walk out and have a full conversation and not worry about it. I've always wanted to take a spinning class, but I know after 45 minutes I would probably be dying. That would be a good goal for me. So everybody got three? Okay, now what I want you to do when you have those three on the right hand side, it says importance. I want you to number them. One, two, three, in order of importance, number one being the most important goal of the three. Who wants to share their number ones? And why do you want the Zoom certificate? Wonderful books. Who wants to share? Ella? 
An hour and a half every day exercise. Wow, that's a great, that's a very big goal. I'm very active, so that's... Yeah, it's volleyball, that's a good one for you. Uh, I want to be able to work out with at least 10 pound weights, because I have very weak arms. You know, that's a great goal. It's very specific, too. She wants to exercise and be able to work out with 10 pound weights. That's a really great goal. So for her action plan, she would start, I'm going to start with 3 pounds. And then maybe in three weeks, I want to start with five pounds and maybe move up to eight pounds. It's a great goal, very specific. Okay? Yes, um, I would like to eat clean on a daily basis and be consistent with my diet. I love that. Want to eat clean on a daily basis. So, on the next part of your sheet, you will find out there are two questions. The first question is I want you to write down what you are going to gain if you achieve your number one goal. What will you get out of it? And the question after that is, what will you lose if you don't get it? Now remember, these should be important. These should be powerful to you. You should use words that are going to motivate you. Remember, we talked about your goal should be exciting, especially the one about what you will lose if you don't get it, because that's the one that's going to motivate you the most. That was pretty funny. Because hmm? I said, I think mine's pretty funny, so I had to laugh at myself when I What's your goal? Um, my goal is to um, get back in shape and have the muscle tone that I used to have in high school. And so the gain is that I'll be back in the shape that I was in high school when I was actually training for fitness pageants. And my losses, I'll lose my figure. And I just thought it was funny. Like, okay, how does that make you feel, though? <laughs> Sad. That's what you need to write. You need to write the feeling that I'm going to be filled with energy. I'm going to be so proud of myself because I got this goal done. I'm going to be so proud to walk in public and say, you know what? I did this. I'm healthy and I'm so proud to be here. Okay? How are you going to feel when you get it done? How are you going to feel at the end of the year when you look back and you didn't get it done? Okay? That's what you need to write. And at the end of the page, you're going to have some ideas that I want you to start writing down. Those are your action steps. And you can do this after today because we, we're going to keep moving on. But what you're going to write is are the things, the actual steps that you can take to make sure you achieve your goal. Then the last part is you're going to write the rewards. Okay? What are the rewards you're going to give yourself along the way? Okay? So you can do those at a later date. But please, please get these done. On the next page, you're going to find your financial goals. I think that's next. Write your top three financial goals. And then on the last page, you're going to write your top three relationship goals. Let's talk about relationship goals. What can those be? How about a better relationship with your parents, with a family member? Better relationships at school, maybe with a roommate, or go ahead. Necessarily have to be with other people, or it has to be with yourself. No, it can be with yourself too. I was just going to say, relationships include you spending more time doing what you want to do, nurturing your passion, or finding out what that passion is. Okay, relationships also include professional relationships. That's why you're here in college. Is there a professor or someone that maybe that you wanted to meet? Now is the time to do it to build those relationships, build those mentors. Okay, because having a mentor is extremely important to get where you want to go. Okay. Everybody pick up your pink goal card that I gave you. If you flip it over, on the back of the card, what you're going to do, you're going to write your number ones. Remember the number one important goal in each of those categories on the back of this card. Remember, you're ten times more likely to get your goal if you write it down. And then exponentially, it's going to improve if you read them every day. That's what this is for. I want you to write your goals down, and then I want you to put this card somewhere where you see it every day. Could be by your bed, a bathroom mirror, put it in your car, or put it in your purse. Okay, but I want you to be able to see it every day to remind you, hey, what are you doing today? What's that baby step that you need to take today? Or do you need to call somebody today to remind them that it's your goal check? Okay, I'm just checking in. How far are you along? Okay? 
but also in the journals that I gave you, on the books on the table, or on the back of your car, on the back of your sheet, I want you to track your progress. It doesn't matter how small it is. Say you made one phone call to maybe a new professor or a mentor or somebody that you want to connect with. Write it down. I made a phone call today. That's progress. Okay. Today for dinner, I didn't have any sugar, or I added a new vegetable. That's progress. Write it down. Because at the end of the year, when you look at the back of the sheet, it's completely filled with all these amazing baby steps that you took to get your goal. They add up to huge leaps. Okay? You must track your progress. And also, when you track your progress, you're going to evaluate it. Okay, well, maybe I went off there a little bit, or maybe I need to change my path a little bit. So you're going to adjust it to make sure you get on your goal. But if you don't track it, how do you know where you are? Okay? So what we're going to do right now is I want you to look to the person next to you. And it's nice because a lot of people don't know each other, so this is going to be a really easy thing, is you are now meant to, you are now partners for each other for your goals. Okay? At the end of the today, you, I want you to exchange phone numbers, but you will see each other, everybody will see each other in three weeks, right? So you have to check in with that person, how did you do on your goal? So before we leave today, you are going to share them the goal that you're going to be working on in the next three weeks. Okay? Yes, somebody's going to ask you, and yes, you have to tell somebody your progress too. Given the fact that we have not some tables is it reasonable if we can? Jasmine's in your table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so make sure you find a partner that someone will hold you accountable because if they won't, I'm going to ask you in three weeks. Okay? So, ladies, please take the time for yourself because you are important. And I know you're going to school because you have very large dreams that I've met all of you. And I think they're amazing. But you know what? None of those dreams are going to come to pass until you take time for yourself and you fill out these cards. I can't even explain to you how important goal setting is. Okay? I don't have time to read the card in the morning. You know what? It is worth your time to wake up an extra two or three minutes early and look at the card. I am a firm believer in goal books. I read mine every morning. Because if you don't, there are so many things in life that are going to pop up that will get you off track. I've got a test today. I've got to study for it. You know what? But why are you studying for that test? So you can achieve what's on that card. Right? So that's what these cards are for. So I hope that this gave you a little bit of insight to how to set your goals and maybe what you really want. Okay? And I hope you got a really great mentor out of this because I believe in all of you and I think success for you is just around the corner. Okay? So please take the time, a little bit more time to finish up your goals. Right? Finish up your number one goal. Make sure you put it on your card. And then I'm going to give you time to actually find a mentor. Um, I'm going to give you about...